Jay says, hi, Coach Josh. I am struggling with this sexual soul tie. I am no longer with him, but I still feel attached. I got you. Well, soul ties are layered. Uh, a soul tie is where your soul is tied to a person. The most delicate part of us out of our three-part being or essence is our soul. Uh, our souls hold our thoughts. They hold our memories. They hold our emotions. They hold our perspectives. They hold our wisdom or skill. They hold our ideas. Our soul is gives us self-consciousness. It makes us aware of ourselves and, and ourselves in the world. And that's the area that compares itself, the soul. And if there's a hole in the soul, that hole is a vacuum that's trying to suck whatever they think can fill that hole up. That's what happens when you get into a relationship prematurely. You create a soul, a hole in your soul. There was a hole already in your soul. Um, all of us was born with holes in our souls. Generational holes that was created through the rejection you felt in the womb of a mother that contemplated abortion or the rejection you felt from a father when your father wasn't there or the anger that you felt at four or five from the resentment of you even being born and the and the and the and the lackadaisicalness and the, the 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 poverty and all that stuff that you was born into was poking holes in you, right? And so all those holes was caused before you was even six. And since you was six when those holes were created, you wasn't mature enough to know how to fix what happened to you at six. That's why the devil tries to puncture as many holes as possible before you come into the awareness of who you are. And even if you come to the awareness that Jesus died for your sins, that he was raised on the third day, but he'll make sure that your churches... Uh, uh, don't know how to patch up those holes. The churches will only talk about the basics, the fundamental things, the milk sipping type stuff. They're not going to teach you about the righteousness of Jesus. They're not going to teach you about who you are in him. They're not going to teach you on how to guard and oh, put on a whole arm. They're going to teach you all that kind of stuff. They're not going to make you aware that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. So if you have all that against you, then that vacuum in your soul is going to try to pull someone or something to try to fill that hole. And so what happens is when we are, are filled with holes and we don't know who we are and we, we just want to have a relationship and all of a sudden we suck a person into our lives and then they are not filling that hole. And then when that person leaves, they have created a bigger hole and now we can't behold what it is that God wants us to hold. And so a soul ties when you have a, a put allow someone into your life. Uh, a, 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 a soul tie de uh, develops from a soul hole. A soul tie develops from a hole in the soul. Because the hole in the soul makes a person desperate for something, longing for something. The soul is where your mind is. That's what the Bible says. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind that by testing and discerning, you would be able to know the will of God was good and acceptable and was perfect. That's the disposition of a transformed life. Being able to test and discern to make sure you don't burn unnecessarily emotionally, mentally over someone. Now, the greatest tie or the strongest tie is sexual ones. The Bible talks about that when a person uh, sins sexually, they sin against themselves. Every other sin is against someone. But when you sin sexually, you sin against yourself. You really wound yourself because people do not understand the potency and the power of sex. Why? Because sex creates life. <laughs> Anything that creates life is a powerful energy force. Anything that is in, involved in the sexual experience, everything's activated. Right now, you cannot forget any intense sexual experience. You can't forget any sexual person you don't have sex with. You can't forget them because in no, no matter who you are in Christ right now, you will always remember Charles. <laughs> you will always remember Chelsea. You always going to remember that. So the devil knows that when you have these sexual encounters before you encounter Christ in such a way that you know, in such a way before you know who you really are, then he knows that I will always have you connected to that person in your memories, whether you are redeemed or not. That's how powerful those soul ties are. Then he knows that if I can get a memory in there and if I can get, oh, oh, don't let me just, and one thing about sexual sins, you, you have a memory 
and you have a memory and feeling. <laughs> now you know he ain't nobody filled you up like him. Ain't nobody dropped and threw it back like that, like she did. You can't you you can't erase the feeling. Now what happens? You minding your own business, reading your Bible, driving to work, trying to be a good standing man, and all you can think about is how she felt. <laughs> how he held you. So now the enemy knows that when you have sex with someone, now you got a memory tie. Now you have a feeling tie or an emotional tie, good or bad. Then you have a thought tie that no matter when you drive by that hotel or drive by that neighborhood, drive by that restaurant, you, you always remember them. Then remembering them then triggers the feelings you have for them. And then boom, you see how ties are intertwined? Now, don't, don't let them text you. And now, because you've been triggered, they don't text you, hey, big head, or how you doing? Oh, I'm in town. Now it's triggering thoughts. Now it's triggering memories. Now it's triggering feelings. Now it's triggering ideas. Now you're trying to figure out how you're going to meet up with them and not get caught by whoop de whoop and so and so. So sex, it creates a strong tie. Now there's hope. There is hope on how you can untie soul ties. And the way you untie a soul tie, you have to go through the process. The process of many people, they want to get over someone that wounded them after the main person wounded them. So you're trying to untie from the soul tie, but have you passed up the soul hole? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to untie the soul tie, but you haven't forgiven your father yet. You haven't forgiven your mom yet. You haven't forgiven your sibling yet. You haven't renounced the agreement of what you did at eight or nine through pornography yet. You haven't renewed your mind about how you're not a bastard child, that you're not fathers no more, that God loves you. You haven't gone through that process of healing <clears throat> from what caused the soul whole that created the vacuum that caused the soul tie. So now you have some work to do. And the reason why you feel attached is because you haven't came into the awareness of, of, of what contributed to you getting into that. Demons know most people only want to deal with the fruit, but don't know how to deal with the root. I wrote a book called The Purpose of Freedom. How to untie soul ties and uproot strongholds. My sister, my friend, get that book. Anyone else who's struggling with soul ties, get that book. That book will systematically bring you through how to untie soul ties, uproot strongholds, has prayers to break connections, all that kind of stuff. Get that book today. So I hope that helped, gave you some insight. So right now, something practical for you, Lucy, is this is what I would do. I will write down any and everything that had you longing for love. It, I want you to write down all those things, whether it's a fatherlessness or a father wound. Who wounded you? What wounded you? How Have you forgiven yourself? What, what are the prerequisites by which this thing is causing you to still be attached? If we don't deal with the root, the fruit won't fall off. So write down all those different things. And I want you to go to God <clears throat> with those things, saying along the lines, Heavenly Father, thank you for making me aware of what was there, of making me aware of my soul holes, the, the reasons why I have this soul tie. Father, I forgive my dad. Father, I forgive my mom. I repent for all the sins that was caused for that negligence. And, and I renounce any agreements I've had. So before you can renounce the attachments and the agreements you have with this person or whatever it is that you have agreements with, you have to repent from any type of sins. Repent from the sin of unforgiveness. Repent from the sin of resentment. Repent from the sin of negligence. Repent whatever the sins the Holy Spirit makes you aware of. Repent for them. God, help me to be done with this. I'm done with this. I want healing. Then he'll show you what to renounce. I renounce all ties to Charles or Tom. I renounce it in Jesus' name. I break the soul tie that I have with this person in Jesus' name. But you can't do that until you forgive. 